drop yeah thank you for your thanks hi no rounds, no rounds, no rounds, no rounds, no rounds. What's the situation with those? Yeah, injuries. Um, Tom Lawrence, um, Sam Vokes, um, Ethan Ampadu all haven't met up. They've got uh, different injuries. Um, Ethan's got um, slight back strain. Um, Tom Lawrence, I was at the game, uh, took a blow to actually to his other ankle. He was he was struggling with one ankle, then got a. Um, a knock on the other ankle, so he was out. And um, Vokesy has been struggling with a groin, come back at the weekend, played 70 minutes, and then just felt it again. So um, the three of them are unavailable. Um, Aaron's just got a slight knock to his thigh, so we're just uh, monitoring that this week, but he should be okay. Should be okay for Trinidad or you? Okay? For the weekend, yeah. The weekend. Yeah, he won't be involved tomorrow. And um, some of the players trained this side, David Brooks, uh, Lawrence, um, there's one other as well. Um, Dan James. Dan James, yeah. What are the pieces for them? Yeah, well, you know, some players have not played since last week. Some players have played at the weekend. Obviously, James Lawrence played uh, Sunday evening, so he, he met up with us um, Monday. Um, Dan James has played a lot of games in a short space of time and the way that he is, dynamic player, just thought I'd give him another day, but he's he's fine. And Brooksy just uh, took a knock on his ankle, so we're just looking after that really. That was the reasons that they, they trained away from the other, other lads. And they should all be okay? Yeah, yeah, they're all fine. Okay, um, Trinidad, how much of a bearing is Slovakia gonna have on your team selection? Are you looking to start strong and maybe reduce or are you looking at a totally different side to Slovakia? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a balancing act, really. Like I said, players are at different stages, so some players need games, some players don't. And this is, um, I, I touched on it last week, you know, it's a good opportunity with the friendly fixture that we can have that. It's not a long time, but that six-day build-up for some of the players. So some of them won't be involved tomorrow. Others need a game, need minutes, uh, whether that be 90 or 45. We'll just have to have to see and um, see as we, as we go along in the game. And I'm, if my memory serves me right, your Wales international career actually started at the race course. I think it was either a Wales under 18s or an under 21 game where you played for the first time. And everybody clapped when you started because they thought that puts the end to the England Wales thing, do you remember? Uh, yeah, and under 16s it was. Was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, against England, yeah. What do you remember of that and how special is the Well, I remember obviously playing for England schoolboys the year before, playing against a lot of the lads who I'm now playing with. So, um, And vice versa, a lot of the lads who were playing for England I'd played with the, week, the, the year before. So, yeah, it was a bit strange, but yeah, I, it was something obviously well documented over the years. England schoolboys went to an English school, but I always knew the next year that I would be playing for the, for the Wales youth team as it was then. So, yeah, it was a, it was a proud moment for me. Obviously, um, first game against 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 uh, first game for Wales. So yeah, it was um, good memory. Bit of symmetry going back then, huh? Pardon? Bit of symmetry going back. Then. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the occasions that I've played at, at the race course, I've enjoyed it. So um, again, going back to why I wanted to play the game here, it's a friendly. I wanted a full house, which it looks like we're going to get, rather than you know potentially a half empty stadium um, so and you know what I've said about um, a thank you to the, the fans in the north as well you know having a game on their doorstep which doesn't happen very often yeah it's frustrating you know he's, he's, he's at that age obviously where it's in between his age and and the first team so a lot of the time he's travelling with the squad and I went through it a little bit where you know you sometimes you don't play and then you go back to your, your own age group um, and it's just that balancing that because you know he, he's not getting the minutes that um, lesser players if you like would, would get because of his quality because he's he's you know played the odd Europa game um, the odd cup game for Chelsea and because of the talent you, you know that I can see Sari obviously wants him around the first team but um, yeah, it's just been a bit of a stop-start 
together with the injuries, um, which is frustrating because, like you say, he's he's an amazing talent, and you know he, he's shown that in a few games that he's played for me. Yeah, I think that's that's always the case with, with players in that situation, you know. Or you know, he has a great preseason and f- forces himself into that first team. So I think you know, obviously Chelsea, a uh, big club, they'll be looking at that. Um, but yeah, we've had players in the same situation. Obviously, Brooksy, Dan James, um, Ben Woodburn, Harry Wilson. You know, talented players who who've gone out on loan and benefited from it. But if if he can force himself into that Chelsea team, then that'll be great. Ryan, did Ethan travel to the Ukraine after the last week? Is that obviously hampered his back in terms of the situation? No, I think he, he felt his back earlier in the week, but it wasn't really a problem. Right. So then um, when they've got back, they, they've scanned it, and there's, it's nothing, but it's obviously um, a couple of weeks out, and, and he'll be fine, but just not ready for me. He seems to be picking up a lot of injuries, and obviously growing at the same time. Is that concerning for you? Is it, has he been managed properly? Well, I, I look at the the players like... Um, he, he reminds me a little bit of Steven Gerrard, you know, because he's still growing. Every time he meets up, you think he's grown, or I've shrunk one of the two. <laughs> but he's he's growing out, he's growing up, and he's oh, just... <laughs> pardon? A bit of both, I think. Um, but, no, I, he's at that stage where he's, he's just growing, and in between, you know, playing not playing and um, I think that's that's the main issue but um, yeah Steven Gerrard had it and a, and a couple of players had it where you know they're just still growing and they pick up these little little knocks and strains Why you still got a Daniel James who made of his rise this season? Quick isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, he's he's um, he's a talented player obviously um, with speed that you, you only see every now and again so and he's a great lad, great professional. Um, that's why looking after him really, because he's had three games where you know his um, his stats are, are up there, his sprints, repeated sprints, and of course the emotional game, big game with with City as well, and also change of position. You know he's played a couple of times up front, which he's done really well. Um, but um, no, he's been he's been fantastic. He's been fantastic uh, these last few weeks, especially. What do you make of his mentality as well? Obviously, he was so close to joining Leeds on deadline day, but yeah. that fell through and he's had to crack on at once and he's, he's got on with it. And he yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I don't obviously know the details of that, but yeah, I think they played him that week, or, was it the week after or something like that? So, yeah, it just like you say, it shows his professionalism um, and his mentality to come through that and, um, you know, kick on again from, from what already was a good season. Touched on the Swansea City game earlier. You starting to get worried that City might win the pod. Are you worried that City might win the pod now? I've got enough to worry about. Please don't bring that up. Um, no, I mean they're a fantastic team, aren't they? So they've obviously already got one. Um, with United going out of the FA Cup, makes it a little bit easier um, for them. Um, but uh, they've got a long way to go. But just like us in the treble, you need a lot of things to go go for you and that bit of luck um, which they had at the weekend uh, but um, no they're, they're, they're a brilliant team but um, yeah it'll be interesting to see if, if what they can achieve yeah it's been good I mean um, obviously seeing a lot of old faces um, I was here for so long and you know it was part of the reason why um, I wanted to come here because you know I, I know the people here and I could trust them and knew that the facilities would be would be great and the players would enjoy it especially them younger players you know coming seeing the tremendous facilities facilities here and, you know what I touched on before about um, you know having the best facilities possible and the best preparation for the for the game. Probably we mentioned the injuries for great to see Gareth Bale out there and the scoring for Real on, on the weekend. Yeah um it's always great because you know usually when Gareth scores he, he he goes on a run so yeah it's good to get his first 90 minutes I think it was for three months so yeah I've said before what a talent he is and you know if he plays games he'll score goals and um, you know any manager would want him in, his, in your team Is he, is he someone that you might look at you know, obviously tomorrow night Jackson, it's great to have a match there but obviously the same, isn't 
usually quick yeah I, I mean that's why I picked a big squad knowing that a couple of the players were on the fringe and they didn't quite make it but also you know we have got this advantage potentially of having a for a lot of the players who needed that six day build up rather than you know be involved in the game and then recover um, so yeah I want the best preparation for each individual and it is a bit of a juggling act because they're coming to you at different um, stages some have played loads of games you know you've got Connor who's played a load of games this year Harry um, Dan James I just touched on in a short space of time so giving players um, that lead up to a game and also the reverse players who need games and need minutes like you said last week you had all but one or two places sorted in the right or Slovakia is there a chance for a player to play himself into the team for Sunday if they perform? Yeah. Or yeah, no, definitely. Um, definitely. And that's, you know, I've challenged the players to do that. You know, that um, obviously we want to win tomorrow, but the main thing is to make sure that we get off to a good start for the qualifiers. So if you're not involved, yeah, best preparation. But also, I've not picked the team yet. Um, I've got an idea, but there are still places up for grabs. Right, was it, was it a big thing for you that? Yeah, it is because um, he picked up um, a foot injury against Ajax in the last few minutes. So I was worried that you know it would be it would be about three weeks without a game. So it was good that, like I said, he got ninety minutes under his belt. It's good for him, uh, good for his mentality that he's done that. Obviously. And physically, it's it's great that he's done it. But you've got you've got Gareth, you've got Aaron this year. You've got two two big players playing at some of the biggest clubs in Europe. They need to play, don't they, at the end of the day? Yeah, I said that about Aaron. You know, he's going to a great club. Um, what? You know, it doesn't matter for me where players are, um, as long as they're playing. That's that's the main thing because not only um, you know when you when you reach um, a championship, but actually. Um, we found against when we played Ireland and, and then Denmark it's, it's not a lot of time especially if you have to travel that three day turnaround which a lot of the players are used to a lot of the players aren't so yeah you want players with minutes under under the belt Brian in the last qualifiers for the Euro Gareth got a huge number of goals and assists and seemed like a real man on a mission to take Wales Yeah, of course, you know, he's, he's the main man, Gareth, but also I want to take that pressure off him as well at the same time and have that, if he if he's not available, that we're just not relying on one player. But, yeah, I mean, Aaron scored some important goals as well, obviously, with the emergence of, of Harry Wilson, of Brooks, Dan James. You know, we've got so many attacking options um, and that's what I want. That's what I want. But you also recognise that you have a special player, one of the best players in the world, um, and playing to his strengths also. Brian, what do you expect Aaron to start training? Aaron? Yeah, um, yeah probably Thursday, Thursday, uh, when we get down to, to the Vale, um, getting back on the pitch. And because he's a doubt, will that change your thinking maybe on the minutes Gareth will play tomorrow? Um, yeah, um, I think, yeah. Looking at, I mean, first of all, you don't know how the players are going to turn up. Um, so, you know, we do plenty of medical screening on Sunday, so then we can really plan for who needs to do what. And, yeah, usually that first day, there's, there's three groups. You know, there's a group who can train, there's a group who stay off the feet completely, and then there's one who do, does like a second day recovery or a working recovery. So that will maintain during the week, obviously, with the game on Wednesday as well. I think from my experience when Gareth's turned up he's been brilliant and he loves playing for Wales he loves coming away he's with his mates um, but also he loves playing for Real Madrid you know he's seen at the weekend new manager scoring being a big part of that game um, but yeah, of course, he loves coming away because you know you, you see him around. He's he's obviously one of the voices in the dressing room with the experience that he's got and the leadership skills that he's got also. Do you say one last question? Anyone? Last one? Yeah, go on. Zlatan said that the, the, the quote, circle of Ferguson with people coming before him, that he's not going to be 
class and stuff around the club is a bit more, perhaps more of a hindrance than a help. Or you know, what did he say? He said that there's a huge circle of people that are interested in the Ferguson's uh, Ferguson club and they want to get involved in the club and they want to get involved in the club and they want to get Well, um, I think first of all, there's only Nicky who's connected with, with the club. And when you play over 2,000 games between us, we could have an opinion. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative, but um, I don't think that has any bearings on results or anything. So, yeah, um, we're supporters of the club. Um, uh, together with other ex-players, you know, who are on TV or on radio. Yeah, that's what football is about, having different opinions. But, yeah, obviously he knows more about the club than us. <laughs> OK, thank you. Yeah.